Welcome back to the Global Builder's Guide, Episode 6. I got it right this time. I'm an Igmas, and today we're doing a snapshot. That's right, we've finally arrived at the point in the development of our little project here that I think it would be um, a good idea to release some scripts for you guys to take a look at. Now, I want to warn you, these are not user-friendly scripts. These are not things that you would just install on a computer in a turtle and say go, and they will go and do everything that you ever wanted them to do. These will be mostly for those who are a little bit familiar with Lua or who are wanting to get familiar with Lua and who just want to see what I've been doing with it in order to get the results that I've been getting and maybe mess around with it a little bit. A more user-friendly version is on its way eventually. That's the ultimate goal. But for now, we're uh, we're just working towards that with the routines that are going into place to make sure that it is possible to offer something user-friendly. Now, before we get started, I just wanted to introduce you to my two friends here who have been here pretty much since the beginning, but haven't really gotten any recognition. Their, their moral support has been invaluable to me. This is Ned here, and this is Rob, recently added. Uh, they don't say a whole lot anymore, but they're always here in spirit, and I just wanted to mention them before I forgot entirely uh, that these guys are, are pretty cool, hanging out, keeping me company when I'm doing all this stuff. So, the whole idea here today is we're going to look at the four different devices that I've got in play, talk about how they're working now, what I've done with them since the last episode, then we're going to be taking a brief look uh, over yonder fields at what we've got going on for the next phase of development, so to speak. That's why we're doing the, the snapshot, because we're getting ready to move on to the next phase of development. Uh, so it seemed like a good idea to throw some code out there. You'll notice I've got some information finally on the Super Jumbo monitors. They a little bit difficult to see. I don't know if it's the shaders mod or my texture pack or what, but sometimes you just have to kind of look around a little bit to get in that sweet spot where everything is clear. You can see I've got four columns here. Relays, GPS nodes, builders, and surveyors. And under those columns, we've got Relay 5. is the only Relay computer that I've got registered to the central computer right now. We've got GPS servers 6, 7, and 8 registered to the central computer. And Builder Turtle 2. That's hard to say. Builder Turtle 2 is the only turtle registered to the central computer. Obviously, no surveyors yet. I haven't even started on the code for the surveyors. It's conceptually planned for the most part now. It's just a matter of getting everything else polished up before we move on to that. Now, what do I mean by registered to the central computer? Well, if you watched the last episode, one of the things you, that we talked about was the issue of duplicate messages. And what was happening is we would have our turtle wanting to send and receive messages to the central computer because it was in the process of building a tower, but the, the range for the wireless modem depends at least in part on the altitude of the device using the modem. So when the turtle was down low, it was too far away from the central computer for its messages to be received. So we installed this relay computer so that the relay would receive the messages from the turtle and then send them on to the central computer. As the turtle moved up on the tower, it suddenly reached that magical altitude where it was in range of the central computer all on its own. So it's sending messages that the central computer is receiving, and the relay computer is sending messages that the central computer is receiving. But the central computer doesn't know that they're the same messages just coming from two sources, the original and bouncing off a relay. So we needed to fix that, and I thought we could do the really cheap and easy way or we could do something a little bit more robust that will allow us a little bit more flexibility going forward for larger projects. So what I've done is now when you load up the game or when you add a new device, for example, with one of the scripts that we'll be having for the different devices, one of the first things that it's going to do is send a message to the central computer to register itself and say, I'm this type of device, for example, a relay or a GPS server or a builder turtle, this is my ID number. This is my channel that I communicate on, which see the builder two there. That's the ID number appended to the label. So you'll see two and then ID number two and then channel two, if you were to look at the full packet. But I'm doing that so that you can change, thing, change things later on. Uh, I understand it's redundant now, but it might not be. Um, plenty of ways to uniquely identify the device anyways. And then one of the things that it also adds is a mostly unique message identifier. Basically, the first message it sends is numbered zero, 
and then the next message it sends will be numbered one, two, three, four, all the way up to 99, and then it'll flop down to zero again. What that does, combined with the device identifiers, give the central computer a way to identify the source of a particular message and whether or not it has received that message from another device somehow. So when the relay sends a message along that has received from a turtle, it doesn't change that packet. So when the central computer gets it, it says, okay, I, I just got a message from the builder turtle with all this information. And then, oh, I just got another message, which all the same information, okay, one's a duplicate. And in order to make things even more flexible later on, it actually keeps a log of the last five unique messages it's received from each device that's registered so that it can compare incoming messages to all of those in case it gets a weird network bounce or something is going on or you've got a lot of relays or whatever, it can really kind of lock down exactly what it's supposed to be receiving and what it should just be tossing, rejecting, ignoring, whatever. So that's what I've been doing with the central computer is setting itself up to do that and then also copying those routines in the appropriate fashion to the other devices so that they can use the new packet system that I added, that they're doing a little bit of duplicate checking on their own. They, they log some of their own communication information. And then hopefully I won't have to do anything else to manage duplicate messages. We can add all the relays we want and we'll just be ignoring a bunch of incoming messages as they bounce around if that's a worst case scenario. So that's a central computer. Now, the one thing that I want to change currently when it comes to actually building is that the request for information to build comes from the turtle right now, which is not ideal. The turtle says, I want to build something, give me coordinate data, and the central computer either says, I don't have anything for you to build, or it sends along the data. What I want to do is set it up so that now we've got the devices registered we can have an activity flag on the turtle that registers so the central computer knows whether or not it's assigned to a particular project. So if I say, hey, central computer, build me a GPS tower at this location, the central computer says, okay, well, I see Builder 2 is not busy at the moment, so hey, Builder 2, go over here and start building this. Here's your first block of coordinate data. So I want to change that so the player can manage a lot more from one central location instead of having to run around chasing after various different devices. So that's the central computer, the next project for that guy. Now, we go over here. This is actually, the, the, the rest of these are, are pretty straightforward. We'll, we'll just kind of go in order, and hopefully it won't uh, start raining on me. Uh, I should mention, uh, credit where it's due, the textures for all the computer craft stuff comes from battered old mods. I found they had a mod patch for computer craft that added all these textures that make them look all rusty and beat up and crappy. I, as a computer user, seeing a computer case in this kind of shape just breaks my heart. But given where they are and the fact that it's usually raining in this particular area, it makes complete sense. This is one of the GPS, or sorry, the Relay computers, the only one that I have. And you can see it basically, this is a very low maintenance computer. You set it up, you put the script on as startup, you run it, It's that's all you need to do. Um, it's not complicated at all. And you can see it writes or, you know, prints to the screen everything that it does and it's time stamped in minecraft time which is freaking useless but uh, i chose minecraft time i could have done it in real time um saying it relayed a message from channel seven which is one of the gps computers to channel zero which is the central computer channel two is the builder turtle channel eight is another gps computer the only reason why it doesn't have channel six here which is the third gps computer is because it's way the hell over there you can't even see the tower from where we are so it basically shows you where it's been um, receiving messages from and sending them to based on the computer craft packet info and it just it doesn't touch my packet info at all so we're guaranteed that the message that it gets on the other side is going to have all the information that we need to make our duplicate checking system work very very simple the only thing that I'm thinking of adding right now to the relay system is checking the range of the relay system versus the distance that the devices it's receiving information from are sending from and saying this device if it needs me is going to be out of range shortly and won't be able to communicate and send some sort of flag or error message or something draw attention to itself 
uh, so that if that's going to be a problem, then it can be solved before it becomes a problem instead of something going completely wonky with the build because everything went out of range and just sat there for three days. So that's one of the things that I want to add, but it's kind of a low priority right now. So we're going to go over here. This is just happens to be the fourth GPS computer, uh, even though I haven't got the script installed on it yet. When this goes live, it should complete the GPS network. The turtle should be able to receive, for the most part, GPS coordinates that tell it exactly where it is in the world without any input from me. So right now, no script installed, obviously. The script that I've got for the GPS computers is very simple. All it does is registers with the central computer, just like all of the other devices, and then runs the GPS program that comes with ComputerCraft. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be going into that and writing my own or adjusting it or doing anything of the sort. For now, I just kind of want to get the GPS system up and running and we'll see how it goes. If it's looking like it's not working for our particular purposes, then we can always take a look at adjusting it. But for the time being, um, it's again, very, very simple, straightforward, low maintenance, put it in as startup, it'll register with the central computer and they just run the GPS script and sit there waiting to dole out GPS information. So very, very simple. And that brings us to Mr. Turtle, who, uh, haven't done a ton with this guy. One of the things that I've done with all of the devices, as I mentioned, is we've added the, the label, which for the turtles is very, very helpful because setting the device label means that you can break the device and move it somewhere else and it will retain all of the scripts that were assigned to that device in the directory, the computer craft directory, all of the fuel data for the turtle. So if I break this turtle and move it, he doesn't use this 3,500 whatever units of fuel. Makes it very, very useful to have that label assigned. And in this case, it's assigned based on the type of script. So if I were to have this as a builder turtle now, and later on assign it to be a surveyor turtle, it will replace the label with one that reflects it as a surveyor turtle. So just keeps it updated based on the type of script, but most importantly just has it in place where it can be there and useful to us. The other thing that I've added is the range of the modem, the theoretical maximum current range based on the altitude. So for this turtle right now, the modem range is 120 meters, which I assume is 120 blocks. It would be 30 blocks, 30 meters, if there was a thunderstorm right now, something like that. It's like a, a quarter of what it would normally be. But this is something that I can use, for example, with the relay computers to make sure that things aren't moving out of range of communications distance as part of a project or giving them instructions to go to a certain location and suddenly realize we haven't installed any relay computers or anything like that. The turtles are off in no man's land. They can't communicate with anything. Obviously, they're not going to be able to do anything. So we're going to do a little bit of range checking. And again, not stopping anything based on that range checking. Just saying the last I saw of this device, it was headed out of range and I haven't heard from it since kind of thing. So that's, that's where we're at. And as you can see, I, I was going to do a time lapse display of the building of this tower. Um, but I've done that three times already. <laughs> you can only watch it so many times before you're like, I don't, I don't care. I don't want to see it anymore. So I didn't, uh, but we've got some other stuff we're going to take a look at over here, all the way over here. We got a little bridge over the ravine that I made cause I was bored one day. Why do I need a bridge when I can fly? Exactly. So I got a couple of things going on here. We've got, this is. Uh, a whimsical little structure that I built made even more whimsical by the fact that it's made out of dirt and it started growing grass. This is a prototype resupply dock for the turtles. You can see here we've got uh, a little hut that you can go in. This would have ladders on it, uh, but I didn't have any when I built it. And uh, I don't need them personally to get around, so it still doesn't have any. And I've got three chests here, and there are holes in the front and back. So a turtle can come in this way, and he would come along, and he would stop. There would be fuel in the top chest, and then there would be building materials in this left chest, and then the right chest would be basically empty and used for funneling materials through so that the turtle could easily compare everything, make sure it was picking up the right materials, and then anything that didn't fit with what it needed goes in here, 
And then right before the turtle takes off, it moves all of the stuff from here back into there. So we're not getting into any more mods than we absolutely need in order to manage our inventory, but still putting ourselves in a position where we can do it somewhat intelligently because there's nothing worse than seeing this building that you were supposed to be making all out of smooth stone winds up being made out of cobblestone and dirt because the inventory management wasn't up to par. So the turtle comes in here, does all that, and then exits out the other side. The idea being if you have multiple turtles, you can basically have them line up and go through without you know throwing errors because they can't move they're all expecting to be in the same spot at once and then we've also got holes on either side of the chests and access to the top chest from the top so that we can either have pipes of some kind depending on what mods you might be using resupply turtles moving things around not getting in the way of the ones that are passing through to grab stuff but able to access all the different chests and do whatever they need to do all up here out of the way and the player of course can come up here and I made it specifically so that as long as you're not crawling up on these crazy lights you can stand here and look up and see what's going on without being in the way of the turtles because then they start throwing error messages to themselves and getting kind of unhappy and cranky but the player can get involved and take a look uh, they can put a door here you know because Minecraft is a dangerous place and it'd be kind of a safe haven while you're managing your inventory, whatever. You know what I mean. It's it basically just a little structure that was kind of fun more than entirely functional. Uh, you could do the same thing with like a nerd pole and some chests. It's, it's <laughs> what can I say? It's not absolutely necessary, but I'm going to get the coordinates put together for this so that the turtles will be able to build something like this. And uh, we'll include that in the uh, proper public offering, so to speak. And then I decided that'll be sort of the, the final test of all the different communication routines is we're going to get the co coordinates for this together, give them to the turtle and uh, have them build one of these out of stone, uh, just like the towers were done. And then we're going to start working on the surveyor routines where the turtle will pass through a existing structure and gather information about where the blocks are and what the blocks are so that the player doesn't have to manually enter the coordinates for a structure if they want to be able to share them with other people. They can just tell the turtle, hey, uh, go survey this structure here, the boundaries of where you need to be working. And the turtle will do that. So I came up with this sort of test structure, which is uh, kind of a medium-sized outpost, I would say. Like if you're ready to move up from your shack, like mine, into something with a little bit more room for, if you're, you know, if you're playing modded Minecraft and you want uh, some more machines, some more power generation. These things take up space. This also has room on either side wall for another full-size computer craft monitor. So if you're wanting to move a central base of operations out of your wooden shack in the rain into something a little more permanent, this would be a good place for it. It's not done yet. You can see it doesn't have a roof. I was working on that and I ran out of dirt last night. So I went and started digging for more dirt and it won't be made out of dirt in the final version either once we've got it tested the whole the coup de gras making sure that it works is we'll be rebuilding this exact structure somewhere else probably over here uh out of something that's uh, not dirt now one of the things that i like about it is that from the outside if you're walking up to it it, it looks pretty imposing right like we're still a ways from the door and already the screen is full of blocks of dirt and we get closer and closer and it's still imposing it's it's very you have to look way up to see the top of it and then you get inside it's really not that big it's kind of an optical illusion because of the bulging corner pieces which offer a little bit of space for whatever there's all kinds of things that a person could uh, put in here particularly if they're into the modded scene but for Joe Average, this is this is pretty big. And also, if you start looking at build, building a basement into this thing, uh, you can go a long, long ways with just this. But I would, yeah, I would say this is sort of like an intermediate-sized facility that would be really good with an advanced computer craft monitor right here and a little thing to stand on to use it. I think that would be kind of cool. And then if you're playing on a server and people come to visit, they'll be like, holy crap, how did you manage to make this? And you'd be like... I told a turtle to do it, and he did, because I'm just cool like that. Back door, in case you have to make an escape. 
So that's that's where we're at. Is basically we're gonna do the the little uh, resupply <laughs> tower, and uh, once we're sa once I'm satisfied that the communication routines are in fact all working as they should, everything is building as they should, the turtles are happy, everyone's happy. Then we will start in on the survey routines, and alongside with those, we will start getting into the advanced computer craft monitors and stuff. I actually just finished mining enough gold to make all of the advanced monitors uh, and they're sitting in a chest in my little shack over there so once I get this built out of stone I think is when I will start putting those into place and messing around with those routines for a little bit more robust of a user experience it's been crazy it's been a lot going on I just I wanted to show progress that went above and beyond the GPS towers and also start to give you an idea of the scope of the project it's not just giving turtles coordinates to build stuff because that's been done since the beginning of computer crafted turtles we want to take it that next level and make it that much more useful so if you want to see the scripts links in the comment section below the video sorry the information box below the video take a look at that do what you want with it also leave your comments and feedback in the comment section below the video and i will see you in the next episode in the next two or three days thanks for watching guys and take care